Okay, we're ready. I've declared us ready. As all my papers fall to the ground. I declared us ready. We're having Bushwick Book Club right now. Do you know what this is called? It's called Bushwick Book Club. That's right. I know that lady. She has a great mouth. I, this is my personal thing about her mouth. Anyway, um, how are you, Liz? She's the one with the mouth. Okay. Isn't it? It's very pretty. It's like, I don't know. I, but it's funny because we're here, you know, I keep telling, oh, thinking, what am I going to tell people, you know, to make them come? Come, we have this great show. It's like all new music about racism. Come on. And, um, it's, and, and, uh, and it worked because you guys are here. And, but, it's, but it's funny because like I'm looking at Liz's mouth and then it makes me think of, you know, why Korean people like white people so much. <laughs> and it's partly because they say that white people have smaller faces and and stuff, and I don't know why that's valued. We don't know why, but I value you guys because we're all here together <laughs> celebrating songs about books, and isn't that the real, that's love, and that's why we're here. <laughs> and this is Bushwick Book Club, so the way we love a book is we take it in, take it all the way in, and we spend a lot of time with it, we see what it inspires out of us, and then we, we just fling it at you. And we hope that whatever comes out is nice and plays nice with the other kids and, um, ha and, and you know, learns how to socialize and stuff, you know, or whatever. But we're going to see it right now. You guys, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. But we do have author Mira Jacob here. We're so happy she could be here. This is our second show with, with Mira. And, and, uh, and uh, definitely not our last. Please welcome uh, Mira Jacob. Um, this is my favorite thing of all the things that can happen with a book like this to me is like the Oscars like if you could get an Oscar this is the Oscars for me I love this whole thing the last time you guys did that I like wept and I'm gonna try not to weep but I don't promise um, I'm so incredibly moved and touched and beyond thrilled to be doing this with you and to know that people read the book and then responded to it with their own art. I was telling my husband, I was like, I think maybe art responding to other art is my love language. And he was like, it's actually food, but yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, okay. So I'm going to read to you in, um, this one chapter from the book. And what you should know before I read is um, when I get to my parents, I do their accents. I don't do that because I'm making fun of their accents. It's actually an accent that I used to have and it's an accent that I love very much, so that it is in that spirit that I will be my mother and father for you. Okay. Go? Yeah, go. Hold on, it's supposed to work. Or I will just act it all out oh, here, for you. Here, here. <laughs> here we go. Come on, baby. There it is. There we go. All right. American love. According to my parents, there were two basic kinds of marriage arranged marriage and love marriage. And then there was American love. Mom, if someone asked you to define arranged marriage, what would you say? Good. That's it? What? It's a good marriage. For Indians. Okay, and now define love marriage. A marriage in which the two are not arranged. Aren't you forgetting something? No. Yes, you are. Indians, you're forgetting it's only for Indians. Fine, so what's American love? Fashion, scandal, affairs, slinky outfits, Elizabeth Taylor, Dallas, the Morgans, the Parkers, the Lees. Now you're just shouting out names of friends who got divorced. <laughs> the McLaughlins, the Wilsons. My parents had theories on successful marriages. The problem with these Americans is they are always saying, you're not who I married, and then getting divorced. Indians never do that, why not? because we never knew each other in the first place. <laughs> Lots of theories. When you have more in common, you have less to worry about. Not that who you marry is up to us. No, you do what you want, none of our business. I'm sure the mixed marriages can work too sometimes. But it's hard, I think, for the kids. <laughs> By my early 20s, all of this lived in a pretty strange place in my head. Welcome to the mating game. <laughs> A friend of your great aunt's son, he loves long nights indoors, weekends at your parents' house, and staying married no matter what. <laughs> Say hello to bachelor number one. Looking to blend seamlessly into America while feeling more alone than ever in your soul? Here's bachelor number two. Born there, 
turbot raised here, this young man comes with just enough friction to keep things interesting, understands parts of you you thought no one ever would, and is rumored to exist. Bachelor number three, are you there? <laughs> Luckily, my brother had all the same issues I did and was equally committed to poor dating choices. And he lived 15 minutes away from me in Seattle. One of us was always breaking up with someone or getting broken up with by someone. What happened? She sucks. <laughs> my brother had a type. Blonde, athletic, wrong for him. I mostly remember them by their undoings. The one who didn't like his friends. The one who was competitive about everything. He turned my exes into country western song titles. He said I would understand if I were a real writer. Mopey poet, why'd you blow it? <laughs> he told me beer for breakfast is normal. He could have been your lover if he would have had a liver. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and then he tried to tell me they were mine. Those weren't your panties, but that was your heart. <laughs> the good part about communal sibling heartache is that you get a certain kind of clarity. It's just that we're too kind and mature for everyone and they need to wait and we need to wait until they catch up to the very high level we're operating at. Should we fill the pain with pizza? Yes. And even when that clarity wears off, you still have your sibling. It's our parents' fault. Do you think they even love each other? Why would you ever make me think about that? <laughs> so when Arun became really excited about a new woman after hanging out for a few times, it felt different. I mean it. I think she's it. After a month? Ha. Maybe it's the Indian thing. Wait, what? She's, oh my God, you're going to ruin my life. <laughs> what? You're already Mr. Perfect likes math and science. Now you want to be Mr. Perfect likes math and science and Indian woman? No, but I'm not trying to be perfect. Oh, shut up, even more Mr. Perfect. <laughs> I thought it wouldn't work out. Maybe it would go awry out of the blue like it did with the one who suddenly went back to dating women. But then I met Lopa and saw how they shared some deep core values. One, we're equally chill about tradition. Two, believe dogs are better than humans because they are. Three, treated parents like well-meaning interlopers from another planet. <laughs> At the wedding, my parents wandered around like lost children from a fairy tale whose home had come and found them. <laughs> you look so happy. It's so wonderful, I can't believe it. And what about you, Mira? You've met somebody? Nope. Don't wait too long. Nothing good comes of it. Yep. We think our hearts break only from the endings. The love gone, the rooms empty, the future unhappening as we stand ready to step into it. But what about how they can shatter in the face of what is possible? Thank you. Thank you. Mira Jacob.